What is up there everyone, it's the Gardener Gamertech here, and today I wanted to talk about the air combat in Basfood 1, and how the changes made to it from previous Basfoods could actually help if Basfood was to go back to a modern setting. And I think it's a pretty universal decision that the changes made to air combat for Basfood 1 have made it as fun as it's ever been. I really like flying planes when I get the chance to. Especially using attack planes on operations, it is a lot of fun, and it definitely puts a much stronger emphasis on the pilot's ability to manoeuvre their plane and aim, rather than who could bait the other out of using their flares because that was the main problem with air combat in Basford 4 and to an extent also Basford 3. It was a simple case of as soon as you'd lost your flares or your ECM jammer, you were pretty much dead. You were going to get locked on and you were going to get destroyed very quickly. And this definitely annoyed a lot of people, especially when you had the moving AA tanks which could just shred through anything. It just never felt like it was as fun as it could be, and it never quite lived up to some of the awesomeness we saw in the trailers. However, in Basford 1, I think it actually has lived up to what they showed us in trailers. It is a very fun experience. Admittedly, it does come with its problems, but overall, I have really enjoyed the flight in Basford 1. And it's led me to question, how could the changes that have been made be added into a modern setting Basfield? Now, my first thought was, in fact, just make all rockets dumbfire, like the rocket pods were in Basford 3. So, essentially, the pilot has to rely on their main cannon, so that would be a minigun, a gal cannon, whatever is mounted to the front of their plane, and then they have a secondary weapon, which is dumb fire only. So for instance, like the rocket pods, you do a strafing run and you would just fire these rockets down at the ground. They don't lock on, they fire where you're pointing and that is where they're going to land, within a certain spread distance. I think that would definitely help increase some of the skill, simply down to the fact that the pilot doesn't rely on weapons that do the killing for them. With lock-on weapons, although they thematically make sense, they do use lock-on weapons in the military. In a video game, it seems almost skillless and pointless having weapons where you simply just have to point at the enemy for a short period of time, fire and forget. Those weapons seem to require very little skill and they do get annoying after a while, especially when all you can hear as a pilot is the lock-on sound. You can tell you're being locked on and it's extremely annoying. But if this change was to be made, I think you'd also need to nerf the infantry's weapons against jets, because you wouldn't want the infantry having weapons like they did in Basford 4, and yet the jets don't have access to lock-on weapons. And one way I had thought about changing this was maybe if the jets and helicopters have some sort of active defence system. Now this isn't active defence like the tanks had in Basford 4. What I mean is actually a countermeasure, where if an enemy starts locking onto you, this countermeasure will instantly find the location of that person who is locking onto you, ready for the pilot to fire. Essentially this is based on a defence system that is used in modern military aircraft. We've all heard these stories of numpties who point laser pens at drones and them having to take them offline, but I think one of the funniest stories would have to be about two British traffic wardens who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now they were supposedly on the A1 and they were just using their radar gun to check for speeding cars. Now they pointed the radar gun towards the horizon and suddenly clocked a speed of more than 300 miles per hour. Suddenly their radar stopped working and the officers were not able to reset it. Suddenly, a deafening roar sounded over the treetops, and it showed that the radar had in fact latched onto a NATO tornado fighter jet, which was taking part in a low-flying exercise over the border district, approaching from the North Sea. Now, news of this incident quickly reached the police headquarters, where the police constable filed off a stiff letter of complaint to the RAF. By return came this rather amusing reply. Thank you for your message, which now allows us to complete the file on this incident. You may be interested to know that the tactical computer in the tornado had detected the presence of, and subsequently locked onto, your hostile radar equipment, and automatically sent a jamming signal back to it. Furthermore, an air-to-ground missile aboard the fully armed aircraft had also automatically locked onto your equipment. Fortunately, the pilot of the flying tornado recognised the situation for what it was, quickly responded to the missile system's alert status, and was able to override the automated defence system before the missile was launched and your hostile radar installation was destroyed. Good day. Now as much as I'd love that story to be true, it appears from multiple sources this is more of an urban myth than actually an amusing encounter. However, I do think this system could easily be implemented into a Basfield game. Maybe it's a case of once someone locks onto you, your jet then finds their location but paints it on your heads up display. So if you fly away and then come back for another strafing run, you know the vague area where you were being locked on from and you know to engage that area. Or perhaps have it so that you can then fire this countermeasure and it will instantly track the person who is locking you. This would then add a bit of counterplay because although lower skilled players could use the lock on weapons, they would be making themselves directly vulnerable to the jet or helicopter because they could instantly fire back and retaliate instead of having to fear these lock ons and run away from a small soflam. Now another thing I had also thought of which was actually perhaps giving one of the classes access to smoke. Now you'll have seen in films like Transformers and also just in video game campaigns like in Call of Duty. 
where you throw out some smoke, maybe it's orange, maybe it's purple, and then an airstrike is called on on that smoke. How about one of the classes gets access to smoke so that they can then try and help their air vehicles? I admit there would be people that would just throw it anywhere and try and troll people. But even though you've thrown the smoke, it doesn't mean that air vehicles have to engage that zone. It's more of a guideline, and perhaps this could lead to rewards for the player if it leads to a successful airstrike. So for instance, a support player throws out this smoke into a building which has seven enemies in it. An attack jet then flies down and bombs the building, killing five of them. The support player then gets a bonus because they showed the jet where to fire. And the jet fired on that location, so the jet player also gets some points for having responded to the teammate's smoke. Now of course, this would have to be carefully balanced. You wouldn't want people just randomly throwing it into a field and then they both get points because the jet engaged it. It would definitely have to be thought out a bit more thoroughly than maybe the suggestion that I've just put across. But I think it would be a good system of interaction between ground infantry and the air vehicles because that was one of the biggest complaints in the Battleford 1 Alpha was that it felt like although planes were really fun, they had little impact on the ground. Now for the full game, that has been changed. The attack plane, especially if you're playing on operations, can be an absolute force to be reckoned with uh, engaging infantry and you can rack up so many kills if you get yourself in a good position and you're also aware of where other planes are. But I think for the modern games it's a little bit more difficult as the planes do fire a lot faster but this system could actually help add the interaction and allow pilots to perhaps engage more ground targets than they had previously. Now another feature that was added to Battleford 1 was planes with multiple seats in them. Now this is something people have been speculating about since Battleford 3, where in the campaign you were in a two-seater jet. People had thought this would be a really good idea for multiplayer, but it had never actually made the final cut. But there is one key problem that has recurred from transport vehicles in Battleford 4. Now the simple fact is that people would just use jets and transport helicopters as taxis, and now the problem is absolutely magnified by multi-seat planes. I can't tell you the amount of times I've spawned on a teammate's plane for them to have just have bailed out and then it crashes into a building. While one way I'd thought of actually fixing this was that for all air vehicles, the pilot cannot jump out when the vehicle is in mid-air and it is above 50% health. Now the health could obviously be adjusted, but I think this would be a really good way of stopping pilots from bailing and then getting their teammates killed. And also just wasting vehicles, it's so annoying when you've got people that are in a bomber or an attack plane and they just bail out of it and you lose that plane. You also lose your own life, which is even more annoying, because you had no way of knowing they were about to jump out. And also, another way of countering this could also be if the pilot jumps out of the plane and you hit the button to change seats, it will automatically put you in the pilot seat. I would love that to be a feature, especially for console, because if you're in the front seat and you hit X to change seat, it puts you immediately to the back seat and that's no use and you end up crashing and dying because your teammate decided to bail out. But carrying over the feature that if the aircraft has 50 or more health, that you could not jump out as the pilot would actually stop people from bailing. It would mean that you would have to land the aircraft if you wanted to get out. This then allows someone else to take over the seat and it hopefully doesn't waste the vehicle. It gives the vehicle a chance to be used properly if someone just wanted to use it as a taxi. Because it's really annoying when someone just uses it as a taxi, gets you killed and also gets themselves killed and wastes a really good asset for your team. Another feature I'd also thought for multi-seat vehicles, especially in Battlefield 1 where you have the pilot class, was perhaps if you're spawning in as a gunner on one of these multi-seat planes, that you have the option to spawn in as a pilot instead of spawning in as one of the few regular classes. Because it's especially annoying if someone decides to bail from your plane and they're the pilot class, because then you have no access to repairing the plane. And I definitely would love to use the pilot class more, but of course you can only use that if you are the actual person spawning the plane in. I would love to be able to play as the pilot class. I'm not asking for this to be a case where three people in the plane can start repairing it mid-flight. I just mean for when I've jumped out of the plane, because I'd love to use the pilot and tanker classes more often, but the simple case is I can't because often someone else has already spawned the tank in before me, and it means I rank them up even more slowly than my normal infantry classes. I think this is perhaps just a flaw in the Battlefield 1 progression system, but at the same time I think it would be nice to have the option to spawn in as, a, as another tanker in the tank. It would definitely add in a little bit more team play because you could then get out and start repairing the tank at the same time or you could just be there to help the pilot in the plane. 
But in the end, we'll have to wait and see. Who knows what the next battlefield is going to be and what setting it will take. But these are just some ideas that I thought might help if we were going to go back to the modern setting. But at the same time, I am more than happy if we stay in the past. I would also like to give a quick mention to Toxic Chills. He just made me a new outro screen for my channel. It'll help me make my videos more interactive. He was really great to work with and I'm really glad I asked him to do it. So his link to his channel will be down in the description. And in future videos, it will also be a link to his creative website. So you too could also get in touch if you want any graphics done by him. But I do hope you've enjoyed the video. This has been the guy from the Gamertag, and I'll see you on another video.